So, the ancient religion of Babylon, they all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. Ishtar, the Babylonians. Tyre, the Buddhism. Fatima, of Muhammad. Sophia, the Gnostics. Shekinah, to the Kabbalist Jew. Mary, to the Catholic. And Shakti, to the Hindu. These all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine is going to take you back to the source of light. Because the light that resides in that place that Plato talked about, you need a path to get back to that light. Listen, this is important. She is the one to take you to that light. Now, I'm going I'm to give you a guess. Tell me this morning. Who do you think that light is? You remember what this subject's all about? Lucifer. He's the light bearer. the same kind of symbology on a Catholic basilica which is kind of ironic I'm here today at Washington DC with this big shrine to the Catholic Church here uh, of the Immaculate Conception to have a deeper look at what it's all about what an eerie place So let's go down into the belly, the underworld, where masses take place, into the heart underneath this, the tomb of this huge temple. I mean, we're underground right now. This is underground, this is in the belly, underneath the big temple. So much symbology in here. National Shrine of Immaculate Conception. The birth pangs of the New Age, of abominations, ecumenical, one world under Rome. Revering the mother. Europa.
and look at him. I mean, he's bowing. I've heard so many say they don't revere Mary in that way, the false Mary. But he's bowing to this Ishtar Isis figure. Coming out of the feminine gate, the female birthing womb. I'm sure I don't really need to say too much. It's already pretty obvious what that represents. Well, and there's that hexagon again. This same symbolism, it's just like the Star of David, the hexagon like we saw in the other place. The hexagon with mother and child coming through. And like the reference to the black sun. So Saturn, just like the NASA have recently shown with the hexagon on Saturn and all that. And look, the heart, connection to the heart of the earth. Heart of Mary, pray for us. So often I think it's like that birthing of that Tammuz, Nimrod, Antichrist figure from the heart of the earth, which they call Gaia, like the mother goddess Gaia. So I wonder if it's a reference to that. Definitely Ishtar Babylonian false religion. And this is their belief system I'm speaking about here the references to Saturn. Six sided shape. The Antichrist, the birth of the Antichrist. A copy of the truth of the true Messiah, but this is the inverted, the false one. So there's always parallels and mirrors to the real truth. It's just that they, you know, this goes back to Egypt, Babylon, and there's always been usurping authority, as I said, usurping authority from the real legitimate Messiah, the real legitimate truth that we can read in the New Testament. This is how they are doing it and always have done it. This is the plan all along. The fallen plan, the kingdom of darkness, our enemy, to usurp and trick and mirror and copy, to mislead people. and archways, all the same designs as the other places and she's sitting on a foundation stone there behind these pillars where the veil would be like in the Holy of Holies again, same representation, the mother goddess, Semiramis, Diana and child, the false Mary. Oh my goodness, and once again, you see IXXI, which is Roman numerals for 9-11, on the cup. The Frankists and other secret societies, there is this belief that they need to fill up this cup of sin, make people turn to bad, which you can see happening, uh, in order to provoke the Christ, their Christ to come, which they think is the real Christ. But that's their belief. They believe they need to fill up this cup of filth, this cup of abomination, as we're told about in the Bible, that will happen. The cup of abominations that will bring judgment upon the world. But they believe that they're going to get this Christ is going to come. But we know it's the Antichrist. It's Nimrod from the days of the Tower of Babel. And this cup of abominations. Mate. You know, even Ca I've heard Catholics say that this Pope is very different 
from any other. The way he's uniting religions and one world, ecumenical, new world order. You know, the Jezebel spirit usurps authority where it has none. I was thinking about this the other day. The Jezebel spirit usurps authority where it has none. Um, and this is kind of the way this new ecumenical religion, Babylonian New Age religion is working. Usurping authority over the, where it has none. You know, it's pretty interesting. Usurping authority over the man, over Jesus, the true king, the queen. Usurping illegitimate authority. She is the one to take you to that light. Who do you think that light is? Lucifer. I mean, please do not tell me this is not a, an ornate temple of Diana, the mother goddess. Sorry. I don't think that went down too well. But look, the celebration of fertility. The birth of Tammuz. Whether you call her this, or you call her that, or you call her this, or you call her that, She's the same wherever you go. She is the mother of God. She's the universal life force. Satan is very good at accommodating whatever culture, whatever age, whatever clime you, have to, you, you happen to be in. Man, never to him. He's very good at accommodating it. What I simply mean by that is he'll make you feel comfortable wherever you live in accepting his religion. See, look, even here it's saying to receive the scroll and to break open its seals. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realise this was here. I used this picture in a video the other day. That is Napoleon the Destroyer. Mars, the Roman god of war. That same representation of the Holy of Holies type thing and him raising out of it Apollyon the Destroyer, the Antichrist. That is not Jesus. I don't think it takes much to work out that that's not Jesus. Pope Francis in America with Nora at the White House. Nora? Thank you, Gail. You know, Pope Francis is also going to celebrate his first Mass in the United States, and that is at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Now, he is the third Pope to visit the Basilica that is on the Catholic University of America campus, and Chip Reed is there to show us what to expect this afternoon. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning. You know, around here, most people simply call it the Shrine, and it, it is a beautiful building. It is the largest Roman Catholic Church in America. In fact, they're expecting about 25,000 people here this afternoon to see and hear the Pope celebrate Mass. 